Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with green chili pesto and secret squash side dish. That's right, not only are we gonna show you a very versatile, quite beautiful, incredibly delicious new condiment, we're also gonna show you how to use it to make a beautiful side dish featuring America's best kept squash secret. And I know a lot of you are thinking, we don't know if we can handle two exciting recipes in the same video. Well, you know what? Relax. You'll be fine. We'll go slow. And to get started with the pesto part of the program, we have a little bit of prep to do, which includes roasting some serrano chilies in this hot dry skillet that I've set over medium high heat. And no, you're not seeing things. Those chili peppers are dancing around. Okay, as those skins start to blister and bubble, our chilies are gonna start popping and locking, which is never not entertaining. And then besides our serrano peppers, we're also gonna roast some whole garlic cloves that are still in the skins. And then last but not least, we're also gonna fire roast one poblano chili over an open flame until that skin blackens completely. And as far as our serrano chilies go, we wanna roast these in this hot dry pan until they're kind of blistered and browned on the outside. And they just start to soften up a little bit. And then basically the same goes for our garlic cloves. All right, we're gonna get a little bit of a char on that paper. And we wanna roast those until we feel that garlic clove inside softening ever so slightly. Okay, we don't really need it soft and tender, but we don't want it raw and hard either. So we'll roast those turning occasionally until they just start to lose that firmness. And then like I said, we will fire roast our poblano until it's black all over, at which point we'll remove that and wrap it in a paper towel, which is what I've switched to using instead of a plastic bag. But either one will work, and we will roll that up and let it steam. And then we'll head back to the stove to remove our peppers and garlic. And we'll let that stuff sit there until it's cool enough to handle. At which point we should be able to pull off that paper to reveal our partially roasted garlic cloves. Okay, they're not soft and tender, but neither are they hard and raw. So basically we should have something in between. And yes, those garlic cloves will be a lot easier to peel with the help of a knife. And then as far as our serranos go, we definitely want to remove the stem and the skin if it's able to be peeled off easily. And then you don't have to, but I like to, split these open and scrape out the seeds. Okay, so this step is technically optional, but I do like to remove them, mostly because I don't want to see seeds in my pesto. And then like I said, you can remove the skin if it's already peeling off, but if it isn't, just leave it on. Okay, sometimes I just like to let the food decide. I mean, it only seems fair. And then finally, we'll unwrap and split open our poblano which as you can see is still steaming hot and looking very cool. And we'll go ahead and cut out that stem and seed pod as well as scrape off the skin. And by the way, feel free to use other green peppers for this. I mean, you are after all the Rick Bayless of how to play this. And things like Anaheim or Hatch or Jalapeno would also work. And speaking of Rick Bayless, I've basically stolen his green chili adobo recipe and tweaked a couple things and called it pesto. And in the business, we don't call that stealing a recipe. We call that adapting a recipe. But anyway, once our garlic and peppers have been prepped, we can move on to final production. And for that, we're gonna stuff a bunch of cilantro into this blender. And I should mention, you don't have to remove the stems. And to that, we will also add a handful of parsley. And then we'll go ahead and toss in our serranos and garlic and poblano pepper. And then add what looks like a ridiculously large amount of salt, but it's not. It just looks like that because we're using a larger grain kosher salt. And that was really only a teaspoon and a half. And then we'll finish up with a generous addition of olive oil, preferably something mild and buttery and not too peppery and bitter. And I'm gonna give you a little more info about the oil in the blog post. And that's it, we're simply gonna blend that by pulsing on and off, scraping down the sides a couple times if necessary until we have a fairly smooth puree, but not too smooth. Or if you have one of these fancy blenders like I do, you could easily turn this into a light green smoothie but that's probably gonna to be too much. Okay, what we wanna end up with is something that looks like this. All right, a fairly fine puree, but still a little bit coarse. And as far as green colors go, that is an amazing one. So above and beyond being delicious, this really is an absolutely gorgeous sauce. And if I was gonna serve this right now with some roast chicken or grilled meats, I would have definitely added some fresh lime juice to this. But since I'm gonna use this for different things, I'm gonna leave this as is and then add the acid if I need it when I mix it with whatever I'm serving it with. And that's another issue I will explain a little more in the blog post. So at this point, our green chili pesto is officially done and really was tasting amazing. 
and ready to dress the aforementioned secret squash salad, which starts with these. Chayote squash, which kind of look like the result of pears and avocados having relations. And outside of Louisiana and a few Mexican neighborhoods, these are virtually unknown. And I really do think those folks help keep it a secret so the price doesn't go up. But anyway, let me go ahead and have and quarter these so you can see what's going on. And right in the center, you're going to see like this pit or seed-like object, which is pretty soft and they tell me is edible. But I always feel like I need to trim it out anyway. So I did. And then we'll simply go ahead and slice these into whatever size pieces we want. And you're seeing my preferred size right here. And no, we do not need to peel these. In fact, that skin is going to add a very nice textural element later. So we'll go ahead and slice those up and transfer them onto a baking sheet. And then before we roast these, we'll go ahead and toss those with some olive oil and some salt. And I was going to say to bring out the flavor, but these really don't have any. Until they're dressed with something. Alright, what makes this squash so interesting is it really doesn't have its own flavor until you mix it with something. And then it sort of magically does. And not just the flavor of what you're mixing it with. Alright, that stuff just brings out its own natural goodness. Alright, so it's kind of hard to explain. But if you try it, you'll understand. And then what we're going to do once those have been coated in oil is we're going to go ahead and pop those into the center of a 450 degree oven for about 30 minutes or so or until they're just barely tender. All right, we don't want these mushy, but we don't want them crispy either. So they should be just fork tender. And you also should get a little bit of caramelization. And then what we'll do while they're still hot is transfer these into a mixing bowl and squeeze over the juice of one lime or I guess lemon or vinegar if you want. But that lime is a natural and perfect pairing with our green chili. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and add a couple nice big spoonfuls of our pesto. And then last but not least, we will crumble in some nice soft creamy goat cheese. And we'll take a spoon or a spatula and give that a mix. And as the heat from our secret squash melts that cheese, it's going to combine with the lime juice and our pesto to form one of the most delicious and gorgeous green dressings you've ever seen. And then once that's been well mixed, we'll go ahead and transfer that to our serving dish. And yes, I also stole this from the great Rick Bayless as well. It's fine, he doesn't care. All the great chefs want you to steal the recipes. That's one of the things that makes them great chefs. And then once we have that plated up, I'm going to go ahead and finish the top with some extra goat cheese. As well as a little sprinkling of pumpkin seeds. For a little extra hot green on green action. And that's it. Our Chayote squash side dish featuring green chili pesto is ready to enjoy. And I realize no normal person gets really excited over a squash side dish, but this really does get me pretty close. And as I mentioned, that squash by itself is virtually tasteless until you dress it with something as amazing as this, which brings out its very subtle but unique flavor. I mean, it really is so interesting. And while I'm sure you're going to love the taste of this, the texture is just as interesting. Right, that roasted skin has a little bit of a crispiness to it, which contrasts perfectly to that tender, juicy flesh, which is almost melon-like. But anyway, that's it. With apologies to my friends in Louisiana for revealing the secret of chayote squash to the rest of you. I will feel a little bit bad if the prices start to go up. But regardless, I still hope you give that squash and this easy, beautiful, and delicious green chili pesto recipe a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.